it and we are live happy thursday to everybody and hope everybody's been having a great week so far and i've uh, just been getting things ready and looking forward to our next painting session together got a little smudge on my magnifying glass here all right now today we're going to be working on our friendly little citadel uh well games workshop chaos space marine and we're going to do them up as an, everybody's favorite grumpy boys, the Iron Warriors. And they'll, they're also the only OSHA compliant chapter, or legion, that we'll see. <laughs> All right. And uh, as I said before, uh, like I did with the Necron before, um, because I'm going to do some darker metallic colors, I am did base him. Well, spray primer him with a Chaos Black all over. Weather was really great yesterday, so I was able to get the priming done. Because today, not so well. It was really wet and raining. So, I'm glad that worked out for us. Now, with this model, we're going to do things a little differently. With him, you know, naturally he's going to have his, his typical base color of the new uh, Iron Warrior base. But, also going to put on the Hazard Stripes. The, you know, the typical Legion War... Iron Warrior Hazard Stripes, and we're going to add those to his right shoulder up here, kind of work around this little chaos point, on down on this leg, also on his chainsword, and on his bolter pistol. And if you do notice, if anybody asks, I do drill the barrels, and let's see if I can get a better light on here with this, there we go, as you see I do drill the barrels, and I did pretty well on that one. I just took a lot of time and practice to get those drilled. I also drilled the side through so you can see behind. So, a little fun here with him. Um, not also just the armor, but he does have like a little piece of cloth here in the front, a little chainmail loincloth, a couple skulls here, holster, and just all kinds of little fun little things that we could put details on and make them fun and stand out. I plan on using my Iron Warriors, making a small little kill team, playing one of my local gaming stores, um, just to have fun and just, you know, enjoy, enjoy our time. All right, just one moment, let's go ahead and get him going. Um, we've got a little bit of dust on him. Moment here. Uh, sometimes I just like to use my airbrush just to get some dust off. Of course, later on we'll work with the work with our airbrush and one of our future one of our future visits. Okay. <clears throat> Now today I am doing, I know last time, uh, one of y'all mentioned that, hey, where's my wet palette? Well, here's my wet palette. I got it all set up. Just a nice little basic wet palette I got from, from, uh, I think Michael's, just the standard Matterson Stay Wet Handy Palette. Pretty affordable. I mean, cost like seven, eight dollars. And that's going to help our paints last a lot longer. Um, so we don't have to, you know, constantly dry out and get more. All right, excellent. So the first thing we are going to do is we are going to give them a nice base with our Iron Warriors base. Now with this, I'm going to go this first because this is going to spread all over. Um, now, since this is the main base, and we're going to be building up from that, we can get a little we can get a little messy. And remember, this isn't like coloring, a, you know, doing a coloring book. We don't have to stay in the lines, make sure everything is in there, you know, where it needs to go. Any little any little marks over, we can just paint over that, and just you know, be careful as possible. But remember, nothing is permanent, so. We can have fun with it. And there's also going to be a lot of little details on this guy that we're going to have fun with the gold trim 
and just kind of make things stand out because ultimately we just want to have a nice little mo model that's going to stick out on the gaming table and you know kind of draw the eye to it but as I said we don't have to get super super detailed or you know parade quality <clears throat> now for our now to for our like our iron warrior's base is we're going to go ahead and use our number one flat fine detail brush uh, I like this because it can <clears throat> this is it. I can just put it, paint on the flat flat details and you're good to go <clears throat> oh sorry <clears throat> Ooh, sorry about that weather's weather's got my throat a little froggy But with our models, as I say, we want to build up. So with the most general colors, work up, get our most, and then get to our more detail and fine as we go. Now, now since we got our wet palette, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just put some of this lead belcher on our wet palette. And it's really great because I can just pull it off, draw it on there. And it stays nice and wet. I don't have to worry about it drying up before I can use most of it. And, <clears throat> you know, and it's worth the investment because you do save so much money just on, you know, having to not <laughs> get all that paint wasted. Now, so now we're just going to start very slowly, very small, thin, thin coats. And you can see how it's laying on there nicely. And this Iron Warrior is a very nice, strong silver color. Which I like. That, that makes it really nice. Now remember, we go over a little bit on some of the edging. That's perfectly... Okay, let's see if I can zoom here in here a little bit. <clears throat> but we can start seeing where it's learned on there. And as I said, we want to just do some nice, thin, thin coats. And just, you know, kind of make sure go with the pattern, the shape of the armor. Now there's always a little bit of spiky bits and everything. Now, I am going over on the edges a little bit, but that's okay. Remember, we can go, we're going to go and clean those up, and those are actually going to have a different... We're going to go with a good golden color, golden bronze color. So... Go over that a little bit. It's okay. This is all just working it, having fun, just doing the best that we can. Remember, the only person that has to be happy with your model is you. you now you don't have to do this for anybody else. But there is also that extra little satisfaction of when people just kind of wow and awe over your minis. <laughs> little ego boost there. <clears throat> Excuse me, clearing my throat here. Usually when weather starts changing, I get a little frog in my throat and it kind of keeps me from keeps me from speaking, which Depends on who you ask. That can either be a blessing or a curse. Um, and let's go ahead and just work our way up. <clears throat> now, this holster, we're just going to kind of avoid that. We just want to avoid a lot of the spots that we're going to need to do other colors because, yeah, we don't have to be super neat on this. We don't have to, you know, be exact. But it also doesn't hurt to not have to paint over areas that we don't need to be painted over. Um, now this leg I'm going to leave because uh, you'll see why. We're going to do something special with this leg. Uh, we're going to do our hazard our hazard lines, you know, our typical Iron Warrior hazard lines, which are so prominent. And I've seen people paint Iron Warriors with it, without it. I kind of like it. It makes them stand out a lot. It's one of the things I do like about them. They just don't have that, just a boring, because if that, they would just be boring, basically silver and gold 
and just, you know, they would just kind of blend in. They look very boring, kind of like Space Wolves. I mean, Space Wolves are very, very bland or boring. The only big thing with them is just they just don't like to wear helmets. And, you know, that just doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> All right, and I do want to thank everybody for joining in. If uh, anybody's joining in. Um, and let's just go ahead and you got his... And this is coming up pretty nicely. <clears throat> it's looking really nice. Let's go ahead and work up more on the leg. And on here, we don't have to be so neat. There's some little details in here, but we can get those details later. Right now, I just want to make sure we get a nice coating of this. Island Warrior base color. And so this whip held is really great. I mean, I still haven't used much of it, and it's just still it's keeping the paint very smooth. And that's what we like. We want it to keep a nice smooth color coating. Because if the paint gets too dry or too wet it becomes very unmanageable and well just want to make sure it's manageable get us our nice thin our nice thin coats on here let's go ahead and get in here in the chest and also one reason i picked this model you know you know he does have the nice pose the chain sword and the stuff chain sword and the bolt pistol but since these are the ones that came in the uh, Shadow Spear box set, they're kind of a mono pose, very simple, pre assemble. Um, so I, I chose this one because it has the chest piece open too. So this way we can actually go in there, look some of the painting techniques for the more of an open torso, as opposed to tr more traditional, you know, up against the body, you know, very, very compact. And you, the only bad thing about that is you can't really get in there and get the the torso details unless um unless it's the standard build where you could just go and I'll I'll assemble the torso and everything and then I'll do the arms separately. That way I can make sure I get the chest piece done in there proper, paint it up, make it look nice, and then I assemble, you know, then I get the arms on. And that's how I've done my Thousand Suns, because a Thousand Suns are one of my favorites to paint. And uh, can't wait to paint one of those with with all of you in the future. Um, just so many colors, the golds, the blues, really, really, really gorgeous models. All right, okay, I'm trying to make sure we're still on camera. <laughs> I keep having this tendency to want to pull it closer to me. And that's because, you know, I'm getting old man eyes. You know, 40, 44, so... Eyes aren't as good as they used to be, which, you know, they really weren't the best anyways most of the time, but, you know, they don't get better. And this reminds me, though, of just painting min miniatures uh, with my cousins uh, at our grandparents' house when you were younger. Uh, we painted a bunch of orcs, a uh, bunch of green skins, a bunch of orcs on my, on my grandmother's coffee table. And so I learned a lot of dry brushing techniques, a lot of layering, using thin paints. And also we did a lot of great detail work. We actually put uh, blue face paint on the orcs, kind of like a, kind of like woad, almost like Pictish, almost like a Pictish type warrior. <laughs> really, really great times. And just really got back into the hobby. Just, you know, most of them were several years ago because... As most people know, with miniatures, especially if you're doing a Warhammer, they do get quite, can be quite pricey. Um, it's worth it in the long run. I, I believe it's worth it in the long run. It's a great hobby. The miniatures are wonderful. The games are fun, even though I haven't really played much in forever, especially with the 
locked down situation. A lot of places, you know, for a while, nobody would do anything. But let's see, I found a great little new local shop. I'm going to go to, and we're going to. Um, they have uh, nice kill team games. Uh, but they say they're not competitive. It's just fun, and that's what I'm looking for. I'm not really into tournament playing, anything complicated, nothing hardcore. Just something to go play, enjoy myself. You know, shelf my minis and maybe you know, paint paint with some friends and also just show them you know help them paint, show them some techniques because. One of the biggest obstacles I do see is people are scared to pick up the brush. And that is one of the biggest things I, I've, I've noticed is people are so scared. Just pick up the brush and just put the paint on the mini. And as I say, to me, this is one of the more relaxing, peaceful things. You know, you had a rough day at work. Boss yelling at you, you know, customers being rude, just, you know, it's a rough day at work, you know, just go home, pull out your paints and brushes and just start, start, you know, painting. <laughs> and you don't have to be a professional, you don't have to do anything super fancy. You don't need thousands of dollars worth of equipment. Just grab some paint, grab some brushes, and just have fun with it. Create, you know, create. Do do what you want to do with it. Yeah, let me just get a little more paint on here. Very clumsy with the miniatures lately. I've been knocking them over like crazy. Um, Now, I'd like to get a hold of some uh, old, you know, metal, metal miniatures, like the old school ones. Those are, I think that'd be fun to do one day, just kind of paint one of the old school miniatures that they, they really don't sell now. Because basically everything you get is, you know, the plastic or the resin, like the Forge World resin models, which kind of had that white color to them you never really get to mess with those I don't know it's just just never really found the need to get a Forge World minis or anything and I have ordered DK, you know, transfers and stuff for them from them because sometimes they get some really nice transfers especially some like Horace Heresy style transfers it gets a lot of really <laughs> awesome details as well and I'm just gonna a little bit here on his knife just to start getting it to show up so went through with our iron warrior base and let's just make sure go around touch up some spots make sure he's looking good nice and shiny remember don't always just have to deal with one coat, just a couple, you know, a couple thin, thin little coats. That's all you need. A couple of thin coats, all you need. Remember, you can paint your guys whatever color you want. So if you're painting along with me and you have a Chaos Marine or Loyalist Marine or Tau or, you know, even painting a Dungeons and Dragons Bard or whatever miniature you have. You can paint them whatever color you want to. There's no rule or law says this has to be this color. This has to be this color. It's your world, your little character. All right. He's got some nice little shine to him. And I'm just going to go ahead and just add a little bit of the silver to the chainsaw teeth, which 
I'm not going heavy detail on that right now. This is just a nice little undercoat. Because we're going to have fun with this. So we're just going to have a little bit of fun with it. Ah, oh, that focus in here. All right. All right. All right, let's let him sit and just get that dry a little bit. And while we do that, let's clean our brush. Because, well, dirty brushes don't help. Yeah. Funny thing, I've yet, knock on wood, <laughs> knocking on wood here, um, I've never taken a drink from my from my you know brush cup uh, I've seen people do it I've heard stories but luckily I've never had that happen one of the reasons why is too is when I'm when I'm painting I never drink on I don't have an open cup um you know you don't want to stick your brush into your cup or you know drink out of the wrong one so I usually have like a bottle or something um, that I have a lid on it so I know that's that's to drink out of. <laughs> All right. I never drink. Um, I don't have an open cup. Um, you know, you don't want to stick your brush into your cup or you know drink out of the wrong. Okay. Uh, excuse me, I'll take a drink. <laughs> All right. All right, well then, just let it dry a little bit. Let's see if there's any spots that we miss, anything we need to get in. No, okay. That's looking good. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to do, we're going to get a little crazy now, okay? Do something a little fun and crazy. And I'm going to take our number two right No, not the two round. I got the wrong one. There we go. Our number zero flat fine. What I'm going to do with this is because I'm going to do the hazard stripes on here, here, and on this leg, chain sword, shoulder pad, and his mini bolter. Now, when I do that, because I could go ahead and just put the yellow straight here on the chaos black, which works, but, and I did do that earlier to a mini, just to see how it would look. It actually comes out very, very good. Um, so, and that's just a really coat, I ran out of Ran out of the um, Avalon Sunset. Well, it was kind of dried out and I ran out and so I had to go and get some more. Luckily the store had one bottle left. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to work on the small base painting details. Uh, such as our Avalon Sunset, some Blood Belcher, and other little colors that we're going to need. Maybe some... Maybe do a, a white on this cloak part just to just to kind of pop it up, and then we can since it is cloth, we can kind of cheat a little bit and use one of the contrast paints. Go in there, and also just get some of the details with some black. And then of course uh, we're going to want a smaller brush, and we're going to want to go through and hit with our gold trim. All right, and one thing I'd like to. I always like to check each thing because this side down here is a little spot that kind of missed, which it really didn't matter because that's going to actually be covered up with gold, but you know, have your mistakes. <laughs> All right. And 
And the other thing I love about this white palette, I can put the cap lid back on it and it'll still stay. So if I've had some paints that I'm using, I can still keep it on there. The paints will stay. Um, it makes life a lot easier. And I just want to welcome anybody who's just joining us. So, uh, have a fun, fun time today. Actually, I'm going to. I want to do the gold trim last because the gold trim, you notice on the leg, there's some like ridges, things like this. I want to do the gold trim last because if I do go over a little bit on my Avalon Sunset, I'll be able to cover it up because, you know, and that's easier to just do the cover up as opposed to let's um, repaint it or painting over parts that we don't really need to paint over. So I want to make sure I have something small. I'm actually going to go with this number zero tight spot fine detail brush. Notice it has a crooked end so you can actually go in there on the fine detail and actually helps if you need to go behind things since you have that little angle to it. So, what we want to do is get our Avalon Sunset, which I have my new one here that I can open up since my old one was pretty much dried out and empty. Since, you know, for the longest time I was painting Imperial Fist, and yellow is not the greatest color to paint. Um, okay, let's go ahead and just get open, let's give it a good shake. You know, I always want to mix those paints. You can hear the little mixing ball in it. All right. Perfect. And what we're going to do is we're just going to get some out. We're going to put it right here on our wet palette. Which is it. What the hell is wonderful? Let's just draw some out on our palette here just so we have control over how much paint we have. Let's go ahead and start up here with the bolt pistol. Bolt pistol, fairly simple, just a lot of it's just flat. Just want to put the paint on here, nice, even strokes. Now, the thing goes with the yellow. Usually with the yellow, you'll have to make multiple, multiple um, layers. <clears throat> it's just the way the yellow pigment works. It's always frustrating, annoying, uh, just how the yellow pigment just wants to just not go straight. As I say, you get you see it here, but you still see the dark underneath, which is okay because we can always add more, more. You know, we can always do another layer. Let's just go ahead and get up on top of the bolt pistol here. Here. Let's get up here. Just very little petal, do ya? Of course, with this, we are going to have to. We're going to have to go back over. A few more times, just because that's just the nature of this yellow <laughs> but it is a good nice sharp contrast so if you can see already just how it's coming out it's just a nice sharp contrast <clears throat> and like down here on the leg leg is always a little tricky because we have a lot more little things poking out kind of breaking up the surface but Okay, we just keep our hands steady. 
find along there. And when you get up to the edge of something, I like to push it. I'll, I like to push the brush to kind of get the edge of where I need it to go. And you know, just steady hand. Just let the paint go where it needs to go. No need to force it. And this part that kind of takes a lot of patience. Um, this part you're just kind of, you know, take it slow. Have a plan where you want it to go. Move the model to however you're going to be comfortable with it. And the most comfortable with it, the better. You want to take it in here. And see, and you can see how it's not perfectly smooth. I'm trying to get smooth, but there's still some parts where we are going to have to. You know, do a second coat. But the good thing with the thin coats, it does dry pretty quickly. So you can fill it in. And the good thing with this, it doesn't have to be perfectly neat. Because, because there is going to be a bit of battle damage, scarring, paint chip. You know, things that would happen over their, you know, their 10,000 long year crusade. Um, you know, Chaos Marines are pretty old. They live in the warp, do all kinds of shenanigans. I mean, if you want to just, you know, that's the nice way to say it. Still getting used to a camera position. And the biggest thing I've noticed, I've seen people that look at discouraged, you know, from painting models or armies that they want. Or they would like to play or that they think would be cool Maybe because they get discouraged on the actual painting of them All right, now this part is going to be a little tricky it's right up here inside the leg I don't know if you can see it it's just kind of right in here one of the reasons why I'm using the crooked brush You know, there was a crooked man who used a crooked brush to paint his crooked binnies. <laughs> and it's a little sloppy in there, but that's okay. We're going to clean that up once we get the chance. This little thing right here in the way, this little... flap in the front. Which I never understood the little flap in the front. They're already armored. What's that going to do? Now we could just always do the cheating thing. Just kind of just, oh yeah, you can't see it on the model. Just, you know, don't worry about it, but I know it's there so so that would bother me the Avalon sunset does always have a bit of a chalky feel to it I don't know if anybody's used it does you know it doesn't have a very glossy feel it just feels very chalky very matte and that oh. Uh oh. You see that I did it? Oopsie. That's okay. 
because it's still fresh. Just get that off right quick. It's okay. It need be. And that's what I love about the wet palette. I can just go back over with some of my Iron Warrior. And there we go. It never happened. <laughs> But that's, as I said, that's a great thing with a wet palette because when you do something like that and you need to pick one of the other colors up really quickly, you don't have to reopen it, make sure you got it on there. You can hit it really quick and get your, get your issue resolved right there. Okay. It's a little tricky up here in this front part right behind this flap here. So I'm trying to get in there, I'm trying to get up there and just kind of pushing against the little arrow. And let's see, we could just, all right, we're going to let that dry a little bit. And next two pieces I want to do though for that's going to have this yellow is we're going to do a shoulder pad here and the chain sword, just the. On the chain sword, I want to do the flat piece right in here, top and bottom. This is it. Now this little deep, little bit of detail is enough just to make make it pop, bring that extra attention to your to your mini. And it's all about having fun. Push your limits. You know, don't put you know. Sometimes it's good to be a little uncomfortable with what you're working on, but if you don't push yourself a little bit to that challenge, you won't you won't get better, you won't practice. So everybody starts off in some way. And I and honestly by no far means I am not a huge professional, I'm not one of those people you see winning awards for like masterly detailed airbrushed armies you know I'm I'm just you know enjoy myself playing the hobby painting and that's one of the fun parts about the hobby And that's seeing where the like the hero clicks or I don't know if anybody remembers those, but those are all like little miniatures, you know, like Marvel or DC or whatnot. And they were already painted and that just to me that just took that just took a lot of the a lot of the fun out of it. I you know, just the sitting there building them, painting them, you know, personalizing them, that's 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 what I like. You know, experiment, make your own chapters, make your own Chaos Legions, make your own, you know, Tau, Tomb Worlds, Dynasties, whatever, you know. So just don't play Tau. No, I'm joking. Make this a little smoother. That's it. I'm going to make this as smooth as possible. I'm going to make this as smooth as possible. Sorry about my camera work. I'm just trying to get a good spot where you can see what I'm doing and I can see what I'm doing as well. I just want to say. And as you say, there's a little bit of yellow on the arrow and there's some on the edge, but that's okay because we're going to go back and do those late in a bit. Right now, we just want our based Averlin sunset. Make it stand, make that yellow pop, make it stand out, make it look great.
So everybody loves the fourth legion. Fun thing about the Iron Legion, though, is just, and ironically, because one of my favorite loyalist legion, loyalist, you know, marine groups is the Imperial Fists. And if you know anything, the Imperial Fists and the Iron Warriors do not really like each other. Um, it's because, you know, Proterabo, the Primarch of the Iron Warriors, was a little salty. And Rogel Dorn, the Primarch of the Imperial Fist, is just, you know, a boss. You know. Or if you watch Alpha Busa videos, you know, Dad Dornable. Or Adornable. <laughs> Alright, now this is going to be. You would think this would be nice and simple, because it is flat. But you do see we got a little bit of detail in there, some little recesses and ridges. So what we want to do, we just want to go in there and just kind of push the paint and then slide it out. Push the paint, slide it out. Push, slide back, push, slide back. Push it in, slide out, and that's coat one. A little bit of a coat too. Remember, it spills over, goes over the deep, goes over the little edging. That's okay because it's all can be corrected. Now the underside is going to be a little more tricky, so just give me a moment here. You may not be able to see well, but we're going to just do the same thing. Push and slide, push and slide. slide. Just because it's a part of the model that you don't think anybody's going to see, doesn't mean you need to ignore it. I've seen models where, like, you know, the inside of the legs not painted or backside, you know. This, you know, well, we're just going to avoid painting that, which it's all right, but I mean, it's just a, to me, it's just kind of, it's a lazy habit to get into. And I'd rather practice doing those difficult parts because ultimately it just does make you better the more you, the more you push. So here we got, got him with his leg. Chain sword, bolter pistol, and shoulder with that Avalon Sunset Yellow. I see a little spot here I need to hit. Just, just kind of give it a once over where it's dry. Go ahead and just kind of, where it's dry, just kind of go ahead and give it a little once over, smooth it out in some places. Works so it looks nice and good. And I'm happy with this Avalon Sunset coming out well over this Chaos Black because I was toying with the idea of maybe going over with like a white base or Wraith Bone, kind of a either a lighter gray or white almost to paint the yellow over to make it stand out, you know, to brighten it up a bit. But as I was doing my one model a day, just kind of testing some stuff out. And it actually came out pretty, pretty vibrant and nice. So, decided to stay with that. All right. Okay. And I believe this may be it for the Avalon Sunset. A little bit of fine touches here on there. And 
Remember, if you get some yellow and stuff that doesn't need it, just that's okay. You can always go over it. It's a pretty easy color to cover over, I found. Um, like that spot in the back of the leg that I accidentally hit and then I brush it. Can't even notice it. <laughs> Alright, let's go ahead and clean our brush. Make sure it's dry. I like to clean it out, make sure. Let's make sure I keep my tips. Okay. Now we are going to do the fun part. <laughs> this is going to be this is the fun most. This is the most fun part. Plus, well, always the most fun, but it's also very um, tricky. Um, this is going to need a very steady hand. But what we want to do first is we're going to get our nice Abaddon black, our nice black here. And go ahead and get my mixing ball here. And I think that is, is this the only Abaddon black I have. Because it may be. Let me check something here. Actually, no, I forgot. Another Abaddon Black. And a little Assault, Intercess Assault Intercessors paint kit. I picked this up because uh, I want to do a video uh, in the future. Is I'm going to have my, my daughter, my stepdaughter, youngest stepdaughter. This we're going to put these together and I'm going to have them paint it just using nothing but the paints that come with it. And let's, you know, just walk in through the techniques and, you know, see how they do. Just, you know, it's people that, you know, very, very, very new <laughs> to it, and to see how they do, and hopefully they get a love for the painting. All right, let's shake that black up. All right, it's nice black here. Now for this, I am going to want to use fine detail. This is a 3.0 fine detail. Or, I, or do I even want to go smaller with the 4.0? Uh, I'm going to go with a 4. Because what we're going to do is this part is going to be kind of tricky. What we're going to do is we're going to draw on the black stripes for our hazard stripes. Now, with these, we want these all to go the same direction. So I'm thinking having them go kind of down like this, so they'll come down, 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 kind of like a taper in the back, and then right here, I'll just go and have them kind of down, diagonal. So on the arm, have them kind of going boom, 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 then on the gun, have them, then on the blade, I'm just going to have them kind of go kind of have them go down. So, what we want to do is get a very little bit of the black. Because basically, we're going to freehand. Alright. And we want to just kind of freehand that black line. Line it up. Have to make it as wide as we want. What we're going to do, we're going to make it kind of we're going to make it somewhat wide. But not too too wide. Want to be. I'm gonna have this one go down. Actually, I'm gonna kind of make this one go in one direction like this. Now this is pure freehand, so this is always gonna be a little fun, a little challenging. Now it's hard to see because. This inside here is going to be the hardest part, I think. So let's just go ahead and get that done first. And to be honest, this part of it is nervous about the entire day. Not making this. Uh, this we're going to just go straight down. Draw it up. I want to go to.
this so we're first thing we're doing is we're just kind of just kind of getting the good idea where they're going to be once we have the straight lines once we have that set then we can once we have that straight then we can go ahead and make the lines thicker so we want to just kind of keep everything the same width now the back of the leg it's a little tricky it does like to curve Does like to curve a little bit right here, but it's okay. And this is going to take a couple of coats, but that's okay. Now, this inside leg, we're going to cheat a little bit, as I say. Can't be super exact, can't be super precise, but what we can do is just kind of go in here and just kind of make the impression that we have a, a line here. So, kind of have one leg start. You know, we have the leg started. Have it going up here. Have it kind of stripe up here. It's just, you know, hard to get in there, especially under the inside of the leg. And that's going to be a little challenge, but we're, we'll, we'll get that figured out. All right. Now, what I want to do now so I'm going to use a fl little flat brush, now, small flat brush. So we get those nice straighter lines. I just want to fill in what we have. So I'm going to fill in what we have. So it's a nice solid black. It's nice. Solid black line. I see some people like, oh, I'll just uh, use a marker or a sharpie, and then you never want to take a sharpie to your. You never want to take a sharpie to your mini. That's. It's just really, really cheating right there. Now, you see here, it's kind of bowed out. That's where we get our little bit of Avalon Sunset. And we just kind of fix the line. Just kind of go over here and just fix the line a little bit. Just fix the line. Line it up. See? And then we fix the line. And this is why hazard stripes here are why these are the only OSHA compliant legion. Just gonna put it on there. See? Boom. Here's his leg. Now we're gonna do the same to his shoulder. It's gun and chance work. So it's always good to have a good idea of which way you want the hazard lines to go before you start applying them. Because you don't want to go halfway through and the next thing you know you are in a completely different pattern. <laughs> so
we're going to go the same direction on his shoulder here. And we're just going to I'm kind of going over the little arrow point, but that's okay because that's going to be painted over anyways. And then we're just going to kind of go over here. And we're just, you know, I'll have to make it too, too pretty. As I said, the shoulders do have a bit of a, the shoulders have a bit of a curve to them. So... And the shoulders doesn't, doesn't need very many. We're not going to do too many on the shoulder. One of the problem with the shoulder is we got the backpack hanging over it. So we're just going to kind of push that here. And then I'm going to come through with the... I'm going to come back through with the um, Evelyn Sunset. And kind of clean these up a little bit, okay? gonna clean them up a little bit in a bit and since I do have the chaos black or the Abaddon black this shoulder here is just gonna be a black shoulder the Iron Warriors their one shoulder is always a black just a black pauldron and that's where we'll put his Legion insignia the decal will go there on this shoulder And that's going to be a project for another day, just doing decals. Because decals, a lot of people just either are scared to put them on. I think they're scared to put it on because they don't always really show them how to put them on. So, let's just get this nice black here. Since we already had that out. So... Looking good so far. And let's go ahead and touch up the Everland Sunset here on this shoulder, kind of straighten out these hazard lines on this shoulder right here. There we go. Just straighten them up a little bit. Got the leg. And you can see on the distance though, it does it does make them pop a little bit. Alright, we've been painting this guy for about an hour, so not bad at all. And I hope everybody's enjoying themselves so far. I know I am love making this content for everybody and so I'll let you know um, if you're enjoying this content you'll feel free to donate um, to my PayPal that link is in my channel and also on the on my YouTube channel and my Facebook page so every little bit helps because you know every little bit every little bit helps and you know it helps helps uh, keep me going keep you know paints brushes whatever miniatures you want me to paint for you in the future be more than happy to take requests also looking at if I need to sell you know any of my anybody the miniatures anybody's interested in or you have miniatures of your own that you want me to paint for you I'll be more than happy to do that as well um, just want to make sure get everybody as 
squared away. Now let's just go ahead and just get the underside here. Get the underside here. And I kind of made that a little bit sloppy than it should have been. That's okay. Because what's our rule here is no mistake that we can't clean up. And it's underneath, and underneath is always awkward and the worst spots. And need a good clean, clean yellow here. Underneath that's fine because he's starting to pop out now. It's starting to look a little, starting to look a little mean, you know. Because Iron Warriors are not nice guys; they're angry, bitter. Yeah. Well, like some people I know. <laughs> Just not a video. Just not one of my videos until I knock a painting, a uh, knock a miniature over, huh? So we're gonna kind of come here, paint this across, paint this across, and then we're gonna paint this down. Ooh, that black is very, very runny. Didn't dry my brush out well enough, I don't think. It was very runny. That was almost like a wash there. Let's go ahead and use your paper towel to pick up some of that moisture. Let's pick up some of that moisture. real quick one that isn't so wet and I'm just gonna straight from the pot I'm sorry getting used to the camera angle still sorry about that We want to let this dry a little bit, but while that's drying, we're going to go ahead and work on the next fun thing on these guys, the gold trim. Now, the gold trim is one of my favorite things to do, and well, for that, we are going to use our Retributor Retribute, Retributor Armor. I love this color. I use it a lot on my Thousand Suns. Let's go ahead and just pop it in there. You notice I have not done any washing on this yet. I have not used any of the shades. I say I'm going to do the shades after we get all the base colors down. After our base colors, I do the shading. And then I will go and do the the, the 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 shading, and then we'll go in and do our layering and fine detail. So let's go ahead and get a little bit of rich reader goal, and I just hit it on my model. That's okay because it's very wet. The reason why pay attention to what you're doing. <laughs> oh yeah, I like this. I like this cold gold color. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna start in the bottom. What I'm gonna do is all are the edges here. 
I'm using kind of a bigger brush at the moment. But that's okay. Just want to put it on there nice and gentle. Nice and gentle around the, the edges of where the armor is. Remember, we get a little extra on there. Nothing to clean up. Looks like a little bit on the base, but that's okay. Because basing... So we get a base on there that's going to clean it all up. And this is very, very wet. I'll use my dry palette a little bit for... So I'm going to have to use my dry palette a little bit for some of this rich shooter gold. It's very, very wet and I don't want it to go on that wet. And I'm also going to use a smaller brush, I'm going to see. Remember, it's all about looking at it is. If it doesn't work for you, just go ahead and uh, try something else out. And I'm going to go ahead and put my lid on my wet palette. And for a lot of this next stuff, I'm going to try to use a dry palette. Just because of some of the details and some of the things I need to use on here. Okay. All right. I'm going to go with my trusty zero fine detail tight spot. Make sure I get this gold on here. And now I said I just want to go on the edges of the armor. And this part can sometimes be a little more time consuming and frustrating than, you know, our safety stripes. <laughs> um, and you see how where I had some of the Avalon Sunset and the black hang over on the edge. Remember I said that's no big deal because all we do is fill in little points very carefully. Now if you do mess up, you get a little paint somewhere else, that's okay. But... You know, with this, you want to clean up very quickly. Cover it up very quickly. Let me just move my camera more here. Actually, keep pulling it in closer to me, so. Here, let's just do this, and I can adjust my lighting here. Okay. Good lighting is also very important. Okay. You can see we got all of our edges here. Let's go around up here in the front again. And that's the bad thing with our wet palette is we don't have a lot of time until it dries out on us. So we're gonna have to just we're gonna fill it in.
And of course, I'm taking my time being extra careful. You want to just do a, you know, quick field paint on them. You know, it's pretty simple. Just go get the, you know, just paint the basic colors you want. You know, you can always just do the basic details later. But I say I like to take my time on this and show you guys how we can make it look together and you know hopefully you show your friends my videos and see it as well now I'm getting this very difficult part because underneath the alright that's good and of course, I still haven't added any shading to it. All right. But as you see, we're just following along the edges of the armor. This can be very time consuming, but we want him to look want him to look good when he's out there terrorizing the galaxy for the ruinous powers. And I mean, I really enjoy just minis like this because it kind of gives you a chance to show off a little bit. Um, just kind of show off. Kind of see what it, show everybody what you can do. There's his legs. <laughs> <laughs> but you can already see how the gold's popping it out or hazard stripes are kind of popping it out and once we get that uh, once we get our shading in there you know our washes or shades in there it's really going to start making things pop out a little bit more let's go ahead and get this gold spot up here so nobody wants a flat looking model. You say you want your model on the table and people can say, you know, hey, that's pretty awesome. How'd you do that? All right. Thanks, Daniel. Thanks for joining me. Missed it yes, you know, last time about the wet palette, I was just using it, but for this retributor gold, I need to kind of keep it dry because it likes to get away from you. So, <laughs> so I want to make sure I don't go too crazy with it. Because on this part, a little bit will go a long way. A little bit will go just a long way. Oops, I got a little bit on there, but that's okay. If you get a little bit on, you know, a little bit of spillover, that's okay. You can always come back and clean it up. Paint over it, remember. Nothing is permanent. You, you know, make sure everything is just done just how you want it to do. So we got an arm here. And that gold really does start breaking up that, just that Iron Warriors gray, silver. Metallics are always kind of fun to mess with these, on these two. Another fun thing is just get like a nice metallic base coat and do a thin color coat over it. I've seen people do Alpha Legion armor. That way they'll do like a lead belcher under spray coat. And then after that, they'll go and um, they'll kind of do like a translucent, like a turquoise, teal, whatever over it. And then it's that metal really shines through. So you have that nice metallic armor with the under, with a little under bit of the metallic showing through in the color. 
Now the shoulder blade, we want to get this here, the shoulder plate. Um, it's a nice Thursday night though. I hope everybody has anybody having a good weekend plans. Yeah. And this is always the trickiest part. This is why I usually this is why most times if it's like the regular assembly, not these quick assembly, you know, mono pose ones that come with like the box sets. I'll put the backpacks on last. They usually should do it on these two because the backpack is usually is a separate piece. But just gets so hard to get in there, and that's why I kind of like this this fine detail tight spot brush because I could kind of use it, kind of push my color in there. So pops it out. Um, just pop out the shoulder here. Oops, looks like I made a little mess here, but that's okay. Remember, make a little mess. We can always clean it up. These really, really start to take shape, though. And that's the thing is, we want them to look really good on our... We want them to look really good in our battlefield, so when we plane them, we know which guys are ours. It makes the games a little more interesting. Or if you just want to paint them up just to show them off. I'll just put them on the shelf and show everybody, hey, look what I did. And also do that. I'm going to have to go back over the shoulder with a little bit of black where I kind of spilt over. It's black on black. It's kind of hard to see in some of these little things. And the shadows aren't, it's like the lights are not cooperating with me. I'm trying to go gently, kind of flat. You know kind of flat side on it so it just picks up on the raised parts but that's not always 100 <laughs> percent oh i love that gold right there that's okay remember any little touch touches that you hit wrong we can always you can always just you know clean it up Afterwards, it's no big deal. Okay, got that. Let's get the inside of the shoulder plate here. All right, now we're going to do his face <laughs> and some of these other little details on him. These are, these are a little bit fun. Um, I'm going to do his front vent. And we're going to, you know, just really, really breaks it up. And let's, let's just go ahead and do a little bit of his belt buckle here. I think that will look nice. And I'm going to do a little bit of chains here. Let's kind of make them look like they had some, you know, little bits and pieces here, but nothing fully, you know, concrete on them. Oops, I forgot this little piece on his back, back side here. And that's one thing too, it's like you'll go through and you're like, oh, I missed a spot but I say that's okay because that happens everybody misses spots here and there but that's all part of the learning and then on his back the skull I'm gonna the skull I'm gonna kind of make silver I'm not gonna do gold on here <laughs> thanks Daniel uh, I do like him and the skull here, I'm gonna do. Gonna we're gonna kind of shine that up because I mean, 
one of their symbols is a skull that's pretty much iron. But also, though, what I'm going to do is a skull on the knee pad. I'm going to gold it up because it's not an actual proper skull. It's like a – this is a um, decorative skull. So we're going to go just kind of push this on here. Push that on there, see? Get a little skull pop. And now his face and backpack. I was like, what am I forgetting? Oh, yeah. So, his face is going to be a little tricky because it's got kind of blends in a bit on the sides. I do really like the new uh, Chaos Miniatures. They look really nice. They're bigger scale. We should give us some more helmet options. I kind of like the old school, um, the old school kind of Iron Warriors helmet. It's like the old like Mark Three, you know kind of old school helmets but I mean you can get those you know order those online go to like Forge World or whatnot and get those but it's also one of the things that always prevented me from getting a uh, making a Shadow Lord's army is they just look weird without their cool little bat helmets so you gotta order those or you know, I suppose you could 3D print them but I mean sometimes it just doesn't feel the same alright yeah I'm trying to get it so maybe I could do you know painting live, you know, just like, you know, like maybe a local shop or do some commission work, things like that. Uh, I would really enjoy that just to, you know, help promote the hobby, promote, you know, get some help, you know, help people out. All right. And there we are with the gold. Before I do anything else though I do need to touch up some spots um, I'm gonna go back to my old iron warriors here just a very very little bit and on the helmet up here it kind of went over on the helmet here And then just a couple spots on the arm. And as I said, we just want to make sure we get them all cleaned up and looking looking ship shape. Or at least as ship shape as a chaos marine can be. Alright, so. I didn't know my camera was vertically. Um, I don't know why it has a flickering effect. I wonder what's up with this. My stay in here. I only have my camera set like this. Let me double check here.
I'm just trying to adjust the camera. Oh wow, so my camera was sideways the whole time. <sighs> I know I should have been set this way. Not sure what my camera's flipping. Give me a second here. This light has a flicker to it. I don't know why this one has a flicker to it. So it's an LED light, so I don't know what's up with that. No, you messed up with my flow, man. You totally, totally got my flow messed up. I don't know why it doesn't let me rotate the... Ah, nobody wanted to see that ugliness. Ah. Yeah, it won't let me change my aspect ratio. Well, not, it won't let me rotate it while it's live for some reason. So, great. <sighs> no wonder why nobody's watching today. Last time I had no problem, it was perfect ratio, but then I don't know why it, it's not rotating. Just give me a moment here. There we go. The stand is all just wiggity whack. I don't know why that light's flickering like that. No, 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 you got me all paranoid. Uh, <laughs> uh, let me just get the camera working. Just give me a second here. Give me a second. 